Hey everybody, welcome to the Birds and Bots podcast episode 4. Today is a completely impromptu episode, so I don't have any other information. I'm sitting here with my friend Vanessa. Last name is... Loman. Loman. Mahek, last name is... Sidhu. Sidhu. And my new friend... Steve. Steve, <laughs> last name is... Kuyak. Kuyak. We're just sitting at the den right now, so this actually might be a complete bomb, depending on the, the noise. So my apologies, but we're just going to let it play in the background, and this is kind of the whole point of random conversations going along as the podcast plays. <laughs> That's it. Now we just talk and pretend like it's not there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I totally agree with what yeah. you said, because I suck at math, too. And when I had to learn the lo- just, uh, algorithms and yeah. stuff, I was like, I'm, ne- I'm never going to use that What is a calculus, bro? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like for me, going, uh, when I study history, yeah. when I... That's how it was in school, you know, the, the age period when I really got interested in it. And I owe it all to my teachers because, you know, they can either make it or break it. Yes. It's a lovely subject for you. So the way she would explain a topic, you know, when I was studying, like, Indian history, yeah. I would get transported back. I would see, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of my eyes, and I loved it. Yeah. I would wait every day for that class. That's awesome. <laughs> and everybody would be like, how do you play? History like, years, <laughs> and who died, and which battle, and what? I'm like, no, it's... it's yeah. and then, this is our history. Yeah, yeah. And you need to know that. Yeah. How can you appreciate the future if you don't have, um, you know, a realization for what happened in the past? Bro, I just need my cheesy poops. <laughs> Bro, that's all I want. But I have to say, what I thought was interesting, uh, growing up in Portugal, they would, of course, give me, like, the history of Portugal, which is one perspective. And then I came to Canada, which is, it's a complete different, like, Like, nationalism? Like, the Poles yeah. conquered the world, or the, the, the Portuguese? Yeah, yeah, it's just completely different. And then you go to Germany, and, of course, you just have, like, Nazi Nazi everywhere, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is, like totally different perspectives because the Portuguese are so proud because exactly the world was split between Spanish and Portuguese and you know that's <laughs> the so treaty of, uh, what was it the treaty yeah. of Tudulo to, to yeah. yeah and nobody like in Germany nobody cared it's like okay for a second world war those are the interesting things you need to learn yeah. so the focus are, is so different even Canadian it's always so interesting I mean we're now like I don't even know if we're now doing it in school but we're talking about the issue that's happened to our first are you Canadian? yeah yeah like the first nation issue and all the yeah. issues hey Terika welcome Welcome to the podcast. It's on right now, just so you know. Tarek is our server and she walked away. Yeah. Now she's only getting 5%. Yeah. No tits 2. for 2.5. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just cool. I've, I was reading like encyclopedias when I was like 6. It's just I've been reading through them like, that was so favorite. cool. It's so yeah, good. I, I, I always like, I argued. I was like, if you haven't read the encyclopedia, <laughs> Let people do what they want to do. <laughs> with I love it. Don't censor encyclopedias. Yeah. But allow the people yeah. to walk read them yeah. if they want to. It's like everybody should have their cup of tea to enjoy, right? If it's not their cup of tea, they should like nobody should force me upon someone like, oh, you don't go through this. It's only after I went through everything, I realized, okay, this is something I enjoy reading. Yeah. Context of the world. Yeah. So you don't sound completely dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, you're from Germany or you're from East or West? Are you from like what province are you from? Or the whole culture of it going? No, we don't just drink beer. We no. have other Very things. Very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Beer's cheap though. But you see, you are drinking wine, drinking beer, don't you? <laughs> we also drink a lot of wine. <laughs> In the Rhine line? Yeah. Cool, that's where I'm from. Alsac, Lorraine, which was yeah. touchy no, topic. Like, <laughs> I, I love the region where I live because there's so many things around wine that are just to bring people together, no matter if you're young or old. So many fairs. And you're a Westerner, I guess. <clears throat> what? You're a Westerner? Yeah. West German? Yeah. More on France or more on the Netherlands? Right. We're like very close, like half hour from France. Yeah. Isn't everything a half hour from France in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's. I like my region. So, how's the weather like there? Is it colder? No, it was how actually, about that weather? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually the same, for example, as in Seattle. It's like very temperate. similar. It's very temperate. Mm-hmm. Most of Germany has that temperate between like 0 and 20, right? Well, but this summer was crazy. It went up to 
climate change problem. Yeah. Yeah. This year you actually felt it. Because I feel like in the past year it was like a myth, oh, climate change, who knows about it, I've heard about it. But this year, everybody who just heard about it felt it too. Yeah. But then, then here's my question. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being the person who asked them, but something very wrong. Good. No, no, it's not, yeah. that's not, that's actually, this is a different episode. This is the whole point. It's conversational, man. I don't want to be a host. I didn't really want to be a host. That's kind of what I'm doing. Here's the question. Do you guys think climate change is real? Or is it like just really exaggerated and blown out of proportion? So, I believe that it's real. Do I believe we know the causes? Yeah, that's... Because, you know, the earth does go through cycles. Let me rephrase the question. Do you think man-made climate change Okay, all right. I mean, I think we do have something to do with it. Are we, like, the sole cause, like, by cars and stuff like that? No, because, you know, well, I mean... Methane. Cows, 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 I hear. cows um, I heard uh, ships, too. There's no regulation on ships, and they're, like, you know, thousands of horsepower diesel engines. They're, yeah. you know. Well, the ocean so trade is a big like problem, the, too. The, the trade of tankers yeah. is the biggest. Yeah. And the destruction of forests and stuff yeah. to balance out, for example, yeah. everything that we were doing bad, and they, you know, that... We're just yeah. doing everything bad, I feel like. Yeah. I don't I don't think that at all. I think we're we have a new cycle that makes us believe the world is getting way worse and we do have a climate change that we have to deal with. But like there's a lot of amazing stories going on that don't get publicized in the same manner as the world's ending. We have that in philosophy I think it's similar it's called it's your death drive. It's why you hack a dart, because you wanna drive real fast so that you you just wanna see the horror, you want to be like violence because it's that, that violence going on, right? But, but I feel like it just seems like that. Seems. It seems what? It seems. It seems, yeah. Like that's it, it seems like you believe it seems. No, but it seems to be that more news are negative because before nobody wanted to say, talk about it because of course the industry mm. wasn't gonna say their products are bad. But now that mm. it's like coming to a point, everybody's talking about it because we've come to a point if we don't talk about it, it's, you know, it's never gonna get any better. Sorry, can I do half the? great conversation on this same topic the other day and we talked about like how climate change in today's time it's almost become a religion you know like if you're out and if you say say, say anything against it people are gonna look down upon you like oh are you crazy I got scared to say it, but like I was gonna bring up my. I read a book by a science fiction writer. He's actually one of the world leading physicists too. Like his name is on a bunch of things that invent physics stuff. I can't even remember his name right now. He is advocate against climate change, not because he doesn't think it's real, but he believes that throughout history, the heretic hasn't always been wrong. And sometimes like Galileo was a heretic in science for believing that the Earth was a heliocentric rather than a geocentric. It's not that I don't I'm not a scientist at all, so I have no clue on climate change. I'll pass the laws to fight it, because that's what people are saying, they're smarter than me. But it's good to be a critic of the world and don't just believe everything you people tell you to an extent. Like maybe it is randomly. I'm not thinking that. But I'm not a scientist like so and I haven't done stats. I haven't done the studies of how science works, the, the geo, the climate, the albedo. A trillion things, and it's not out of my field. I'm a political scientist, so I mean, I don't also don't, don't agree with those people who go like all radical or you can't do this, you can't do that, don't do this because I think that's not gonna, um, you know, change a huge run of things. But I think just to be aware of little things like, do I really is it really necessary to buy this bag, or you know, do I have 10 million? Increase taxation, too. I find that's just like one of the benefits of taxation, mm. yeah. to the superstore, you know, you get 10 bags for like a small grocery yeah. shop. In Germany, you have to pay for each and every bag. You have to pay so much. So, so they're starting to do that here. Yeah. Is it here? How many people do you think make the conscious effort to know that, like at my house, I know I have like superstore bags from like hundreds of cities. Every time I go, I forget to bring my own bag and I just have to get one. Yeah. How many people make the conscious effort? I know I do if I like remember to do it. So for me, it's like when I know, okay, I'm gonna go grocery shopping, I'm gonna, you know, do a grocery bag for the whole week or for yeah, two weeks, yeah. then I carry my bag or yeah, like something. Care. If yeah. I'm like just like shopping and just occasionally go to the store, okay, I'll buy a bag. But it's just, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to be completely radical and say, okay, I'm not gonna.
gotta use any yeah. bags any I can, but just be a little bit more conscious. Do I really yeah, need like, three yeah, of them, like, or is maybe one enough, or yeah, maybe can I bring more? At the same time, the same goes for like when you brush your teeth, right? Like when you're brushing, a lot of people forget to like turn off oh, the yeah. tap, you know? If you can just keep remember small little things like that, yeah. yes, it will make, if everybody does that, but at the same time, it's on you, how you yeah. take those small The big changes can also or can only make like pauses and stuff. They can only, like he said, put taxes on stuff. Yeah. Like a single person can't make that big of a difference, but you just can't be a little bit more conscious about what you use, how much you use, Hell yeah. and what you need. That's all. So like given the previous like periods of life that we have read about, like the different... Like, like the halogen and the other yeah, the different eras. Yeah, that yeah, existed yeah, yeah. on Earth. Like they all have their shot in life, you know, they existed for a... Uh, number of, uh, period of time, right? I did walk in on this. Are we just talking about climate change still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then it just, you know, something happened, there was something, and maybe it was just nature's way of like bringing an end to it so it could start off again. Mm. So I feel like the period that we're in right now, it's gonna happen no matter what we do. Yes, we're not gonna like completely go out and start polluting like rivers, like, yeah, it's gonna die anyway, so it's just keep burning. Well, know? that's a, yeah. that's a bandwagon yeah. effect. <laughs> that's a bandwagon effect that can happen if we don't yeah. fight it. Like, you know, politics, polling issues, a bandwagon, that, that affects everything, right? It's like, oh, well, the world's dead anyways, might as well just throw my shit everywhere. Yeah, you can't do stuff like that, but at the same time, somewhere, I am a believer that it's, like, it's gonna happen, like, no matter what I, like, you know? I you feel know, like, it, like it's frustrating as a single person to think, okay, fetus, if I yeah. can, like, if I stop, like, using plastic, doing this, I can change my I don't think so. I think it has to start way above, like, all this and, and like, but industry I, saying, okay, whatever you put your garbage at, how many plastic you can use for your products, it has to start way up. But for that, that to happen... That starts from the bottom. Yeah, yeah. but for that to happen, th- th- there needs to be, like, way more interest and stuff from the bottom, but so that, that there just needs to be a... Just a 5%. It's so always the advocates. Yeah. Like, we worry about feminism, like, all these things that are going on. It's only like a minority of people that are the loud spoken people that cause any change. I mean, the hippies was only like 5% of the whole population, but that dominated the whole idea of the 60s. So, I mean, like, it's, it's a small group. Feminism, like, real feminists, like the strong people who write about why feminism is needed and, and like, they make what is needed. Not like, I'm a feminist by the idea, but I'm not the guy who, like, said, sat down and was like, let's make what feminism should be. Like, there are people doing that. And that's only probably 5% of feminists who are, like, making these policies and how the world can be better. But for climate changers, you just need some people who are, like, shouting out how we can do it, what we can do, what business can do, what you can do. But it still has to be the people in power to actually do it. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So the single point of view, you can have those people who are interested and who want to see, but if you don't have anyone who has power or who has the possibility to kind of, like, yeah. enhance it and just do it, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And because there's, like, with climate change, there's just so much money involved from people who are in power who don't want to give up that money, that's where it's going to be difficult. Yeah, that's what I think, like, somewhere climate change is being used as political gimmick. You know what I mean? I've got a booming voice. No, it's going to be, like, <laughs> going to be more on your side than mine. Yeah. Um, like, so, I, I feel like, you know, like, all these protocols, like, in the fact that the developed countries, as the developing countries, put it more, when they need to realize that you guys have had, like, a long shot at using those natural resources, the fossil oh, yeah. fuels, why don't you give the same chance for the developing countries to use it? And then once they've re- reached that quota, that level, then they can also start, like, you know? Maybe. Like, uh, tap on it. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. America, compare that to India, has been, like, you know, independent for a long, long time. And yeah. India is still only 65 years old, right? And you need to give India the same chance to use their fossil fuels. I think the question yeah, is, need do you know the trolley okay. program, the trolley problem, or like, are you going to kill five people or one person? So like, you got to, this is like their trolley going, or train, whatever you want to call it, and you're sitting at a thing, and you're watching it randomly happen, and there's a train going down the road, and there's five people on one trolley, maybe there's construction workers, and there's one person on the other, like a child ran across the ball, and you have the choice to stop the thing, like what's morally right, <laughs> to kill the one person or kill the five? And like, if you know that climate change is coming, 
Is it morally better thing to think about the future generation? It's, it's terrible what sucks for stopping Indian or other developing nations from having their access to develop. But if you don't stop climate change, you might be killing five people instead of the one by stopping them to develop right now. You might even end humanity if we don't make it through this. So there's a trolley problem, and I don't know what's right. There's no right answer in the trolley problem. It's like, do you want to kill... If, if you allow the developing countries to develop with fossil fuels, you might kill everyone on the planet. But if you let 1% of the population do the stupid American lifestyle, but we are getting better. We are solar power and all that shit's getting better. We're very... We are getting way better. It's not this... You're, you're born in this period. Talk to your mom. Talk to your grandma. Dude, we look solar panels which weren't even a thing 50 years ago yeah but, but what do we have now that they, they didn't have back then electric that powered is that? cars I mean Tesla has solar pack for your homes now yeah. like a lot of homes are just geothermal but who can afford that well there's in a political science sense I don't know about you I've been having a lot of my classes you have to imagine the political elites fighting each other and there are some political elites that actually believe in against climate change it's not like these oil people are the only people with power like have you heard of the Koch brothers yeah they, they're the second largest private firm in the United States, with like $150 billion in assets a year. They're a they're fossil fuel company, the petrol ship. But they're not, they don't dominate the whole U.S. And there's other companies and other rich people. Bill Gates is against this shit. Yeah. And so is like Apple and Jeff Bezos. There's a lot of competing elites of rich. You can't just, the oil is powerful, but so is software in Silicon Valley. Yeah. I guess that's just the hard. It's yes. No. <laughs> and it's frustrating. Just live your life. Yeah. <laughs> and then when your kid looks at you and asks you why didn't you change something, you're like, fuck. <laughs> why did you change something? Yeah. Why did your parents have you? You're one of the most expensive climate change issues in the world, child. Yeah. How expensive it is to raise you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna die. That screen is blowing up. Look at it. See that little fog? Like on the screen? It's like poke smoke foggy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> sort of. That's a screen issue. That's not a camera issue. Mm. It's good to see you, friends. <laughs> nice to be here. Good to hang out, friends. Nice to meet you, Steve. <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> I can't believe that this week happened. Oh, like, I know, it was it's Wednesday. Yeah. It's crazy, I came here Sunday. Well, Tuesday was a little bit wasted on our way. Nice. <laughs> it was such a long drive, oh my god. Yeah. But at least I got to see Winter. <laughs> winter? <laughs> yeah, she got to see Yeah. 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 We drove to Golden. Oh, man. It was uh, crazy. We were on this path and stuff about like that. climate change. Yeah. It was snowy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was going here a couple days ago, too, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the day we left. Okay. <laughs> Two weeks early in Germany, it was like 33 degrees. I was like, with tank top and stuff. And then I sent the picture to my mom. And she was like, what? It's snowing over there. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you see, like, I'm taking an astronomy class right now because I have to take sciences. So I found that seasons only happen because of the Earth's tilt and the sun. So, like, the solar radiation, yeah. the way it hits us. Yeah. But like, how would climate change affect our seasons if the only thing that affects our seasons is the axis? At least in astronomy. But I guess I guess it would affect the atmosphere. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you get it. Yeah, yeah. Albedo and all that shit, melting ice. The sun is like hotter, or felt like hotter because the it's the angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting though. If we were like this, we'd have the same temperature all year. You just learned that, or? I mean, I might learn it when I was younger. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, it's like, yeah. I remember that from like grade 9 yeah, science. Right like, <laughs> that shit was awesome. I just didn't give a crap at the time. But it's like, as kids, we were like, we couldn't make sense of like the fact that, oh, for me, I remember because my relatives used to live abroad in like Canada or America. And they'd be like, it'd be night there and yep. day in India. Yeah. And I would be like, so, like, confusing. <laughs> How does that happen? Yeah. That's, that's so weird. It's like, you almost live on a different yeah. Or like it's winter in Australia when it's not here, or like, yeah. like no, you're just you're just messing with yeah. me. Yeah. You're everywhere. Yeah. Sun in Brazil when it's Christmas, no yeah. way. It has but to be then, white. But then there's still people 
How much are these? Not even on here, actually. What am I talking about? Are able to take advantage of the non-industrial countries because people don't know what they can actually make make out of what they have. So they just have somebody coming from abroad say, "Oh, you have that. I want that. I'll give you money for that." They don't know that they would use it and produce it. They would make like a long-term company. They just don't know. And they just see, "Oh, I need money to feed my family. This guy's giving me money for it, so I'm just gonna take it." And then they take advantage out of it and they produce it. Oh yeah. Thank you. in Thailand and yeah. Vietnam and India. Yeah. I don't know about Pakistan. Does Pakistan make clothes like that? Well, then Pakistan will, and India was the same, right? Well, like, I know now. Even now, I mean, I'm like, this is still the... Probably, Where's yeah. your shirts from, everybody? Because I know this is this Thailand. is Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly made in Bangladesh, yeah. in Sri Lanka, India. Textiles are still yeah. not really China, right? It's China's mostly China. manufactured goods yeah. rather than, like, textiles. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I bought a new set of sheets today. And it was like, oh, you know, California cotton is made in India. Like, great, you know. Great if you think the about it, they, they, like the, the products are shipped Delaware, from yeah. one place right. to another because the working hand is, is cheaper there, and then it's shipped back just to sell it like more expensive. Where I'm thinking, like the way that this does for like because we were talking about like air pollution and stuff, the way that the, if there was a tax, like you said, on air pollution, they wouldn't do it. They would say, okay, it's cheaper to just so produce hard. it here I don't and see leave that it happening here. Well, that's yeah, but, colonization. Right? Colonization yeah. means when you have some exhausted the resources in your country, then now what you do is you go to another country to use their resources. England wasn't even out of resources, they just had the power and tech to do it. They knew the industrial ages when they became the biggest colonizers in the world because the industrial revolution it's the white man's burden to lift these civilized (laughs) tribes up to God's standard. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. The white man's burden. And whatever they do, it was God who made them do it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's more complicated than that, too, though. There's a lot of people that have good ambitions with terrible processes. Oh, yeah. And we have a lot of things like that, too. But at the same time, we people, like, they just talk about the, the bad, right? The bad side of it, what happened. You know, same for Germany, like, Oh my god, don't. <laughs> I don't know. That's not there. Uh, yeah, no, no. But like in my country, I'll focus on that. Like, nobody tries to focus on actually, we got some really good things out of the Britishers having more people. Stop burning them. wives with their dead husbands yeah, because you had like, to. Yeah, that was an end. They made, they made sure that ends, that practice ends. Child marriage, they made sure that was outlawed, you know? And um, when it came 
to uh, bringing the actual proper Western education being started. Like the education back, it was like old school style, you know? Like nobody learned about science. Check out but, uh, Neil, Neil Ferguson. He has a whole book. Said, he has a whole book uh, on, uh, on England. What they did? <laughs> One second, one second. One second, one second. Okay. I'm gonna go pop. And we're back. <laughs> if I can do this right, I actually saved the file. And I don't know how to put two files together, but that might be my challenge for tonight, I guess. <laughs> it could. YouTube uh, to do it. Something new tonight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's compressed and you know, <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. It's always fun. I remember the days when I had to Google how to put page three only on the third page of your paper so that the first pages didn't count. Yeah. Now I'd be like, how do you do that? Oh, you have to press this button, then you have to put the other thing on here, you have to join these pages. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the old days. <laughs> oh, God. Technology's cool, though. It's useful, easy ish. Google it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you want to say? So, you tell me about your uh, life experience. My whole life. No, like not all. Do you have a question life, in particular? <laughs> like, I want to know, like, um, what were the important, like, the most, um, like, life-shaping events? Well, I'm homeschooled until grade 9. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. I was in elementary school until grade 2. Supposedly, I was really bullied by one of my female teachers who was uh, like a middle-aged lady, back, or more than middle-aged, she's like 60 back then. I don't, I've suppressed it, so I guess that's how bad it was, because I don't remember it. Yeah. My parents pulled me out of school, so I was, I tried to go back in grade six, but I was super unsocialized. Like, I, 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 I played sports, I done things in community-based, but um, I went in grade six, didn't really work out. One of my friends, who's still a friend of mine now, but he broke my nose on my, or he sprained my nose on my birthday. He went a punch in the nose. <laughs> so I just dropped out after that, and then waited three more years, came back to high school in grade nine. So I've really been in, it's, it's interesting not being socialized, so I'm very lucky I can do this. I'm talking with people, that's a skill that I've developed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But that shows how how many things you naturally learn as a kid, like like learning languages. You don't know that you're learning it; you just do it. This is and my if space, you're like my adult, bubble. Yeah, and if yeah. you're like an adult, you have to actually learn those things. So that's like a, that's an amazing example for it. Like as a kid, you just do it. Yeah. There's another kid like play. You yeah. know, let's do something. You learn about when not to hit them, but there's a little. Well, they're all <laughs> happy. Yeah. Like you learn it. What's the, the bending, the hitting? Yeah. yeah. Girls are a whole different thing too, and like that social thing. Like, yeah. It's very complicated. It's been interesting. Yeah. yeah. In BC, do you have to give me some more? I'm more of a question. <laughs> question brings out answers okay, in okay. a way. So you're originally from Summerland? No, I'm from Nelson, and then I raised there for, till grade five, and then we moved to Summerland, which we still live at. So. Plus 21 years, I think, something like that. 20, turning 25, yeah. Yeah. So nice. So there was never the, the drive to say, okay, I'm going in. You know, because you came to Kamloops, which is not like that far from home. I try, so I'm traveling since. So I tried to live in Kelowna for a bit, and then I just I started working two jobs at Subway. I worked at Subway before, and I worked at Subway, and I worked at Starbucks. And I'm working like 45 hours a week for like three weeks. Like, this is. I'm not going to swear, but this is awful. <laughs> I don't want to do like this menial job. I don't know where I'm going with my life. So I came home, um, went to school. I started applying a bunch of places. Got in, I messed up on my applications to all my other universities. because There's a lot of extra steps at other universities, but I got into TRU. So I came up here in 2014. Um, I had a girlfriend over the summer before I came to TRU in uh, Montreal. And... Um, so I actually applied to go to Concordia, went to Concordia in 2015 for about a couple, I moved in July of 2015 and then lived there, isolated, terrible in its own sense because I didn't know anyone in the city, went to the school with my first year done and they're like, yeah, we accepted you with your schooling at TRU for your first year, but 
we've re-looked at your application, we think you should just restart your first year. And I'm like, what? I'm not, I'm not doing a whole nother year just to go to school in Concordia. Yeah. So I came back in November, no, October, no, September 22nd, the final day for drop class at the Tier U. Yeah. I tried the move away thing and it didn't work. That's um, weird. Yeah. Like that they would go like, oh, we didn't check it the first time, but now that you're here. Yeah. When you, you think about started. administrations though, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. I've read a book by Malcolm Gladwell though, which call I think it's uh, David and Goliath and he says a statement which is um, it's really beneficial to be in a location where you're a big fish in a small pond rather than a big fish in the ocean and Cordy is way bigger and like I'm not very smart in comparison to like really smart people but it's here you I'm decently smart <laughs> but in Cordy I'd just be some random guys like there's an issue going if you go to Harvard yeah. people have a lot of hardship going to Harvard because yeah. like you you're have to an be idiot so amazing. compared to the smart people. Yeah. So there's been benefits of being a tier U and all that yeah. for travel. Yeah. So are you trying to say tier U students are not smart? I think tier U students are a good stepping stone for their <laughs> life in the future. Yeah. yeah. So what about like the next step, like after you graduate, do you plan on staying in uh, okay. BC? Uh, I'm I'm hopefully applying for officer training in the uh, Canadian forces, and if I don't get into officer school, I want to do avionic technician or engineering or not engineering avionic technician or mechanics because that's a trade you can learn while fixing planes or using the tech in planes i'm not gonna get shot which is kind of nice yeah. and i'll pay for my master and phd and there's some really benefits of teamwork skills staying healthy in my early 30s um and just the discipline that the army gets you through yeah. that's the idea yeah Hopefully. We'll see. We'll I see. think the army would be great. I would love to see you. You'd love to see me in the army? <laughs> As an officer. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I gotta I gotta be able to run the five minute mile or whatever it is. I'm on my way. Okay, I'm, out. I'll I'm on my you. way. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta quit smoking first. <laughs> Okay. And, like going off, traveling around the country. Yeah, but you have to like that. I mean, you have to be the person to like that because, it, like you said, you're not like that person who likes to be socialized. I might have, I might have liked that. But I feel like that's, that's actually Why? one of the reasons how I got so exposed to the Indian mm -hmm. country, you know, which has different countries within it. It's like the United States when I think of India. There's multiple provinces, but they're completely different, yeah. but they, they can kind of get along. Yeah, yeah. but like in India, it's like so many states want to still, they still um, are working for their own independent status. They want to be a separate country because their people is different, their language is different, so totally different. Yeah. Like, and just being able to live close to places, I got so exposed to like meeting people from the yeah. And that's how it shaped me as a person who, you know, like wanted to know more about like uh, the other side of the, you know, the edge, you know, what the side, like outside of it. I want to know, like, you know, like I know people. So yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. But for me, it was always normal because my parents moved to from Germany to Portugal when I was three. Yeah. So I don't know if you imagine Portuguese people, and that's just the fact. They're just like shorter. They're like dark hair, dark. And that was me. Very nice. Tall right. one. No, no, I was like the tall one. And even though I hated it, I was always. My mom told me I was. I would come home crying. I was like, Mom, can I please dye my hair brown because I look so different? Because everybody just, you know, the grandmas would come. Oh, your hair is so pretty. Your hair. You know, as a kid, you're know. like, Oh, get your hands off me. Like, yeah. You know. And it was just normal for me to because I was. I wasn't excluded. Like everybody was really nice, but. I could feel it that I'm different, but just to see that people are not screaming. <laughs> but look how that can yeah, be your example. Yes, and, and I learned that just because you're different doesn't mean that you can't belong to a different culture. And then when I moved to Canada, which is like very different than the Portuguese like mentality and stuff, it was tough because it was um, the last year of middle school. Oh my gosh, kids can be really mean at that age. Monsters. Oh my yeah. Monsters. And I came here and the, like I was lucky because in Portugal you love to play soccer. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty good at soccer. So I kind of, that was like my step 
Facebook, however you say that, into like a little bit of a group of friends. Mm. Because, you know, I could play soccer. So, and as in the team, you're, you know, you, you just get your friends and everything. Because at school, it would be so difficult. I had, I, I remember my first day, I got one of the girls who had to like volunteer to like show me around yeah. and show where stuff is. On the second day, she didn't even look at me. Because it was like, you know, I had to just, because my teacher asked me to show you around. But after that, she had her friends, and I'd be like, hi. And she's like, oh, hi, and then turn around and go to her friends. I was like, okay. I see there's no interest yeah. at all. Same here. To actually, like, yeah. the first day was just because my teacher said, and then she would, like, bring me to the class. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Vanessa, your new, like, roommate. And I was like, oh, she's so nice. She's introducing me to the friends. After that, never spoke to me again, like, kind of that thing. And, um... I was just happy that I had like the soccer which I was built, but that's the thing. If I wasn't really skilled at it, like really good, I wouldn't have made it into the team, which means I would have been like, it would have been really tough for me to actually get into a, a group of people and meeting, so it's very hard. I, that time here in Canada was really different, because in Portugal, nobody cares. You're just the, the neighbor. They invite you, your family, your cats, your dogs, and you just come over for dinner. They don't know you. They just ask you a bunch of questions, and you're part of, like, the community. Yeah. And it was so different. Yeah. Just getting to, used to that, that was like, oh, where did I end up here? Yeah. I mean, it was nice because it just it drives you to be good, but it's, like, a very different mentality yeah. than Portugal. Yeah. So okay. that's really I've always heard that's one of the hardest things about making new friends, like, when you move somewhere. It's not necessarily meeting new people, but meeting new people that are looking for new friends. Like, yes. Because I moved to Kamloops not knowing anybody. Like, nobody. I, yeah. And I later found out, actually, I do know one guy that lives here, but still. Like, you move, you move to a brand new city, you know, everybody, they have their group of friends, they do their things, but, you know, most people aren't looking for, to add another person into their group of friends. Unless yeah. you happen to find, you know, nice people that don't care if you tag along, and then, you know, we yeah, have a no hobby time. already in place. Yeah, so like yeah. If you're a soccer player and you want to join a men's league or a girl a women's league, right? Or if you're a D and E player, if you're a computer guy, if you want to get into those, you have to have a hobby that's you that you can hopefully find a group on. But you yeah. still have to be good at it, because otherwise they oh. won't even take you to the team. Oh. D and D, like <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. There's other, there's ways. You know, I'm just saying like there's sports, sports. There's sports. basic ones though. There's easier leagues. There is levels. Yeah, but in school. Really like we well, just moved here, I mean. Yeah, okay, school. yeah. I'm yeah, just saying making yeah. friends. Yeah. Making friends is talent, yeah. too. That's a skill you have to learn. Oh, yeah. I can make friends if I want to, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like, I, I almost give up. Unless I feel a connection with people, I don't really want to make friends. I had someone yeah. over last night, which I've known him for a bunch of years. I'm like, he's an interesting guy. But, like, we had a conversation with drunk as hell. But I was like, <laughs> I was like not the I'm not sure. If we're talking about, like, yeah, you're my friend. Michael. Like, I'm not sure if you're my friend. <laughs> I think you're really interesting, but like being a friend, like I'm not gonna put work into this. I'm not. I like hanging out. We're drinking tonight, but I'm not. It's not where I end. I find you guys. I don't even know. But like I find you two friends. Yeah. Like I enjoy. I come out here to hang out with you guys. I think this is cool, and I'm yeah. down to. What are you up to with life? But, yeah, uh, like, you can be yourself. Yeah. But that's also the difference, like like expectations. I remember like last year when I came here mm. because of the experience that I've had in Canada, my expectations were different. So yeah. I didn't come here thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make friends for life, mm. which were my expectations back then because I actually Jeez. moved here. No, ah. no that, that's the thing. If you don't come here with that expectation, yeah. you get surprised by people who actually care. Yeah. But if you come here thinking, oh my gosh, that the first person that's actually interested in me and talking to me, that's gonna be my best friend, and then like a week later, childish. they yeah. don't they don't give a, and then you're like, you're just so devastated. So I feel like because that was the first like that first time that I came here because I thought I was gonna live here longer. I, the friends I met back then. I had the expectation to actually be friends with them. Mm. So to have the expectation, okay, I come here, let's meet the people, let's see, but I don't have, because I knew I mean, I was going to be here for four months, I didn't have that expectation, oh my gosh, you know, who's going to care when I leave? And then I'd rather have Read that. It. Yeah, but I'd rather, I'd rather <laughs> I have that and then have yeah. like three, four people who are, like when I came back and actually got a text message, oh my gosh, I miss you, I, we went here and I thought about you. That's way more special than if I would have left and thought, why didn't this person text me? Why didn't it? And just that way. So I think it, it has also a lot to do with expectations that you have. Yeah. So, and that's Talk that's to my mom, learned. Maggie. She's got to get rid of her expectations. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are her expectations so high? Yeah. Um, but yeah. But that's, that's the only thing that puts pressure on you. Yourself. 
Yeah. Crispy yeah. cold. But like for me, that was actually the reason why I wanted to come to Canada was because I was about to so in. I had read all about like people from this country and like different countries' culture, what languages mm-hmm. speak, what are the capitals of that country, you know. So I could like, and I had a plan in my head. I didn't know what that job would be, but I knew like I wanted to do something where I could use all that knowledge. You know? Yeah. And I was always so like excited to like one day I'm gonna meet somebody from this country and talk to them about like these things that I've read about. Yeah. And being an Ari gave me the perfect opportunity to be able to use that, yeah. right? And that's why every time I checked with people, I was like, oh, so where are you from? And like, she said, she's from Germany. I was like, oh, are you from like Berlin? Or like, yeah, and yeah. if they would say a totally different name, I'd still have some vague idea yeah. about it. And you know, even for them, they felt that even, oh, like, this person you knows care, about You care, you know about my content. I'm in the same boat as you when yeah. I think about knowledge of things. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. where I got to use all of that. If I knew bits and pieces about their language, like even if it was just the hello in their language, I would say that and they would be like happy to hear it. Yeah. And, like, oh, and that's the kind of person I was. Yeah, yeah. Like it was during my check-ins and I'll be honest about it, all my friends that I've made up till this point have been because I met them when that when I checked them in and I got that initial spark from them. Okay, this person seems like the kind of person who would, I would like to hang out with, you know, who would keep in touch. Yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. that's how I ended up making friends with them. They made me introduce introduce me to like friends yeah. of theirs. That's how it was. So I am really fortunate that I got to work as an RA. Yeah. You know, and that's like I can say I have friends from every corner. Best RA of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, like it's it's been a it's been a wonderful experience. Like I've Fantastic. had so many amazing yeah. memories. Like it's been the best. Yeah. But I think that that's also like what I was saying. The expectation. So it was good for you to know all of them. Yeah. But if you would have expected that. For example, if a lot of them were like from abroad, like how many are you still in contact with? Yeah. So yeah. if you have that expectation that each of them, them how that many people oh, yeah, enjoy the so experience. Nice. And now that they're gone, yeah. like if you have the expectation, okay, I want to learn them, I want to learn about them, that's fine. But if you have the expectation, we're going to be friends forever, I'm going to visit them everywhere, oh, no. then that's, no, that's where you get disappointed. And I think it's, it's like I say it very um, openly. I think every person, every human being cannot have a big group. Yeah. Like they can be acquaintances, like yeah. once in a while you can meet like for an event together. But when it comes to having like friends you can speak your mind to, yeah. you can just like text them any time of the day or night. And the man. It, yeah, like it's always just You can talk about your feelings, but the ability to start random baloney I'm trying to swear. Or like random <laughs> baloney with like my best friend right now is my roommate, luckily enough, care. I'm like, because I can talk to him about anything. And when I go on rambles or I'm turning into an asshole, like, I'm not swearing, but I am an asshole in certain ways. And he's allowed to, like, <laughs> shout me down for being that kind of person or just yeah. Yeah. checks me and I respect his decisions. Respecting me is a, a big thing about real friendship. You can tell your emotions to anyone, especially when you have a couple of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, having someone you can respect their response to what you're trying to tell them, yeah. and they'll respond to you, you respect That's them. You but I think, right? Like, I got that advice from you. Yeah. Like I, I'm only in contact with a few people that I met like throughout my two years of being here, like who came from different countries. Yes, I've got in contact with a lot of them, but yeah. I still kept in touch with them yeah. because I always felt that comfortable life. You know, yeah. I could just say whatever I wanted. Yeah, know? because and so it's more of the feeling that you have with them and not the time that you actually actually spend with them. For example, I have a friend back home, which we went to school together, like for the uh, three or four last years that I actually had in Germany. And we live like two, three hours apart, mm-hmm. and we see each other maybe every like three months, maybe. But when we meet, it's like chit chatting all the time. Yeah, it's just like, and I know if something happened or if I needed, I could always call her. But in between those meetings, we might not even text once. Yeah. But as soon as I know, okay, I'm gonna go home. I'll text her. Hey, are you free? She will look like her things around so she's free, and then we talk. So it's not about. Oh, I text her every day, oh, and I talk God. to her every day, that, and you know. High school attitude. That, yeah, that, 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 that doesn't with, matter at all. Like with, with you yeah, guys, no, like you know, you it doesn't have to be once a month, yeah. maybe. You and cannot then do like texting yeah. on a regular basis, but when you do, you pick up yeah. right from where you start, and you and, don't even care about. Like, and the on that, thank you for inviting me out again, <laughs> back and oh, thinking okay. about me to invite me out to this. I did want to see Vanessa. Well, thank you for thinking about me. I mean, I I always knew that you know, like we always had like. Yeah. That you were uh, always hanging out and you were one of them, so I thought, yes, why Thank not? Thank you. Like, yeah. Perfect. She's here. Yeah. My, yeah. my duty yeah. is to be 
sure that you know that. <laughs> that, that was also like something that I thought when I came here. I was like, okay, am I going to like text everyone? Oh, maybe they don't really care. Or busy. Or maybe they're, exactly, and so much they're busy. Stuff. So that's why I like, through social media, gladly that we have social media nowadays. You know, I just posted I was coming Alpha here. Bless. So everybody who cares and who sees, oh, she's coming here and knows, oh, I have time, I'm off, you know, can yeah. always text me. But me being like, okay, I know this person, I know this person, I would like to see all of them, but, you know, I'm not going to put it on them. Oh, I'm here. Do you have time? Because that's like putting pressure on them. Oh, they have to see me. Yeah. But if I just say, you know, in general, okay, I'm in Kamloops. Everybody who's interested, you know, can just come, okay, yeah, yeah. come up and then just have a beer. Even if you, yeah. you just texted me, oh, I would have loved to come, but I, you know, I'm so busy with my midterms. At least I would know, okay, that, you know, he saw that I'm here yeah. Yeah. and he, he cared yeah. and he texted me. Yeah. That would have been enough for me to know, okay, you cared. Yeah. And not, oh, yeah, I made like five hours of time to like talk to you. That message would have been enough for me yeah. to know, okay, there's an interest there. Yeah. Sometimes that's, that's enough. Yeah. That's enough. It's the it's romantic in me, but it's all about oh. the effort, not about the the objective. The yeah. buying cheap flowers because you only have five dollars in your account yeah. is better than saying, "Well, I didn't have enough money for some nice flowers, so I didn't do it." Mm. The effort is what matters. Yeah. In in, in friendship too, it's a romantic a friendship. It's it's love. It's a it's something you yeah. have. You know. <laughs> See, I love to share beer. <laughs> oh no, you're not gonna. Oh. Oh. I've gone to like every city in BC. I've done a couple of youth camps, so like I met people across BC. I've, I've flown out to Ottawa for like a Canada national stuff and all that. I met people like across the country and around the world. Yeah. Like I understand that I just don't talk to them anymore, but I enjoyed the experience I had with them. And they're still deep in my heart, some of those people. But I'm not always contacting them. That doesn't mean that they weren't friends. Well, not even. Like, that, but I mean, just like I'm just yeah. more on her point. Yeah. Like I'm Do probably it, might not responding for. Maybe every couple of years, but I'm not going to be in that hope every but year once a message. If I ever come back to camp, of course. Like, or if I'm in the area, wherever you are, yeah, of course. Like, it's in my head to message you. That would really help. Yeah. And I think it's also a very like, big like age thing. Because you have so many like friends where you're in school. Cause, you know, you were put together in a class or whatever. And then with our age, like me coming here, we chose to be friends. We didn't have to be friends. Mm -hmm. we, it didn't matter, but we wanted to, so it's more likely for us to stay in contact than people that you know you were forced to be friends with because you were in a class or because you were in a sports or whatever. So that was a nice time with them, but it doesn't mean that there was like a common interest for the future. So I think that's also a big difference. I'm gonna say this is super cool. Wait, we don't have to be friends, is what you're trying to say? <laughs> I think no. that's, that's what I you mean. Can that. You can leave if you oh. don't want to be friends. Well, all right, well, well, thank you for joining us. This is. This is the whole point of what my podcast wants to be. Like we started with climate change. I think that we started with climate change. We went into friendship and we got deep into both of those topics and we're just talking about random stuff and it's going in that direction and that's the direction I want my podcast. And again with you messaging you, that's kind of what I really want this podcast to be. Because I want this podcast to be going on for a decade from now where I can message friends who are not here anymore and people I want to keep in touch with. And that would be my way of saying Hey, how's it been? Do you want to be on my podcast? It's been like two years since we've talked, or five years. What are you up to? And this, this, yeah. that relationship is exactly what this is all about, too. Yeah, maybe go back really to cool. the old uh, podcast. Oh, will. Okay, what were we talking? And then, okay, <laughs> will. last yeah. time we, we ended goal. on this topic, so how did that develop exactly. for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah that's, cool. that's the whole idea. And this, yeah. You keep friendships, you make new friendships. This is a friendship tool for people that aren't my friends who might come on my podcast, and if I enjoy the podcast, They'll be on it for a future date, and that will yeah. 
yeah. solidify new friendships. This is my hobby now. Maybe they can relate is. and be like, hey, do I have this exactly the same experience? And I have friends, and now I know maybe how they I might have friends. think about it. Oh my gosh. It. <laughs> no, but how, that, that, know, how they good. might uh, might think mm-hmm. about it. May, maybe we gave them some other perspective. That's that the goal too. It doesn't have to be like, you know, oh, she didn't text me today. Is she not my friend again? You know. Well, like, that's the point. The third person, the listener is right here right now. They're sitting at the end of the table, <laughs> just listening. That's How many beers did you have? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like for me, this whole experience is about the fact, the underlying fact is that if I ever go to Germany, I am sure I'm going to let her know I'm there, and she will make the effort to like post me in her home country. Of course. And I would do that same for her and you. Of course. You know, like, of course I would. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Leave out my mom's room, man. It's all yours. For me, it would be such an honor. I would be honored to do that. It would give me that gratitude, that feeling. Oh yeah, it's time for me to show my country now. You know, and I'm gonna do it to the best. And it's important. Like I wouldn't be able to like do all the struggling that I'm doing now if I wouldn't have the friends in different countries. I mean, I'm not rich. I couldn't afford to be like one week hotel uh, everywhere I go. If I didn't have friends there, I could say, hey, can I crash on your couch? Or like, you know, can I stay at your place for a bit? It wouldn't work out. And yeah, exactly. That's why if you guys would come here and I would say, hey, can I crash at my place? Or I know someone or whatever. You know, that's how you make it work, because yeah. no, none of us is rich, I guess, yeah. but you know, Fuck you no. can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back to the British Empire, we are all <laughs> speaking in English, which yeah. allows multiple cultures around the world, <laughs> yeah. even though they're dirty colonizers, <laughs> we can communicate from India to Germany, <laughs> Jewish Canadian, whatever Polish Canadian, yeah. I mean, we speak English, yeah. and we, can, we can communicate. Yeah, that's how you do it. Language. Yes. Could have been any language, but it, but it, it got give credit yeah. due to credit games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I gotta go. Oh wow! Actually, me too. Ah, this thing. Cool. Hey. Hey, how's, how's going? it going? Oh, fantastic! Fantastic! fantastic. Yeah, fantastic! Yeah. Wow. I, I just subscribed to your podcast. A little. Did you find it? Yeah, well, I'm friends with your roommate. It's true. So, yeah, and yeah. he posts. Yeah, yeah. Links all the time. So it's cool. like, yeah, you know. Hey, Derek. Hello. How's your day going? It's going. Wow. Yes. I get that. You want some beer? Uh, I wish. I know. Don't. I know. Don't tempt me. Is there cameras in here? No, they aren't. Well, you're on a but podcast. So you're under. You're under arrest. Yeah. Look into the birds and bots. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's cool. You not listen to it? Are you even I my friends? Wow. 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 Yes. wow. Well, you're on it, so that's good. Don. Welcome to the Paris yeah. Bot. Yeah, Man, she climbs up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Au yeah. revoir. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of IT did you do? Um, mostly server administration. Cool. And, um, networking. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I worked at a cloud provider. And we're around the hardware background then, I guess, not the software? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah, hardware. Like, I've, I mean, obviously, I learned a bit of software development in school, um, like high school and uh, BCIT. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm a hardware server administrator, you know, kind of administrator, like yeah. Windows, Linux, all so that. So my kind. dad does. Well, I mean, he's an administrator for my mom's company and does a bunch of other little things. But oh. he does. He's the administrator as well of that kind of background for the, yeah. the IT on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I've... I've dabbled in a lot, like, because I actually used to run a web hosting company, oh, cool. just myself kind of thing, just nice. a little, you know, yeah. rented server, whatever, yeah. um, and, like, a few people, they came, they approached me, and they're like, hey, you know, we don't know shit about computers, we know you're doing this thing, oh, sorry. Okay, I've already sweared. Oh, anyways, um, yeah, so, yeah, actually it was interesting, because, like, you know, designing business websites, um, so I had one girl approach me. And she wanted to do an erotic maid service. Why'd you bring your backpack? Are you yeah. doing girly stuff in the washroom? <laughs> <Ew>. Yeah. <laughs> Grody. <laughs> Touching up your makeup scouts? <laughs> no, not that girly thing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No. Anyways, we can clip this part out, right? Uh, <laughs> there? The viewer. Life happens. Yeah. What? Uh, just have a drink or two and you forget about yeah, it. Dude, they've been killing it. 
You got it too. Crush it. <laughs> if we've been killing it, she would have asked. No, Terrica's the, the goat. <laughs> oh, look at these thugs. Mm, to be 19 again. <laughs> A wild group of Canadians come in. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just sense it. I'm finally away from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's any psychologist listening to this, and I keep saying my mom, I'm sure I'm getting psychoanalyzed. <laughs> Instead of my yeah. dad. Hash me outside? No, because we wanted to go to Fox and Hound, right? And it was looking like she was going to get off soon, but it doesn't look like it anymore. Do you want to eat chicken Yeah, Why Fox and Hound instead of here? Because that was the first time when we all went out. We had free drinks. We did. 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 We had free drinks. We had to go to Fox and Hound. Actually, the, the, the party. party. <laughs> Look, you guys want. I got G and T at my house. I want G and T. No, it's just about the whole. Oh, I can't. I actually you know? kept my roommates up all night. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Still free to come to uh, Foxes with us. Oh, I mean, you already <laughs> started, you know. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Conversation. Also, uh, I will probably come. Sadly enough. Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob! <laughs> two midterms, two papers, and so much reading. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm a, I hate reading. I use an audio reader. So, like, it's so intense. Let me sh I don't know if this will. I'm gonna pause the video so I can do it. Hello? <laughs> What's wrong with blonde beer? It's <laughs> bitter? Isn't it light? Oh, it has like a weird taste. Oh, it's super oh no, no, no. I thought it had a different blonde. Oh. I thought it was a different blonde. That's a weird blonde. Who makes that? Red oh, what? I didn't have the red collar blonde. That doesn't taste like reds. How old? Are you sure that iron. iron it's not iron roads? How old is it? It's not iron roads? It's red collar. It tastes weird. I used to drink blondes from there all the time. How old is it? That tastes weird. It's too Whatever. <laughs> and because I'm recording, so I want to try oh. to explain it because I just went through the 250 pages and see if I actually know anything. All right. So the first section is around England Parliament and how the Puritan Revolution overthrew the, overthrew, overthrew, <laughs> overthrew the monarchy, which allowed the nobility class to use the peasants pushed towards industrialization around the 17th century or 1700s, not century. But the revolution in France was actually far more radicalized because the nobility had a lot of issues in the way it worked with the king and their own monarchy system. It was all different in politic issues. The last chapter section was on the American Civil War, which actually, yeah, which they actually considered as the actual revolution because the American Revolution wasn't actually a revolution in de re definition because nothing really changed. All that changed in the revolution was that there's just a new government. Yeah. But they didn't change their philosophy. They still use capitalism. They still use the same system as British. They didn't yeah. change their new system in a revolution. So it was just like a coup, basically. It was a coup to make a new country, yeah. exactly. And then um, the chapter I just finished was on China. Well, why did China move communism? Well, China didn't have working class. They had an industrial... They didn't industrialize at all. Um, the peasants... There's a lot of warlords throughout China, so it didn't have that same top-down approach towards. Um, there wasn't like a there was an emperor in China, but he didn't have the same kind of idea that the king of England or like the powerhouse of the other countries had in in other European countries. And the peasant class was a lot more scattered throughout China. And the reason it moved to, to communism was more based around the events that come along with when the what is it called? The Kuomintang, which was the party that's now owning Taiwan. But they, 
they fucked up so badly when trying to reorganize China that the communists came in through and they did a better job of appealing to the peasants because they had to because the communists realized you had to turn the peasants into working class you had to turn the working class into the revolutionaries but you had to turn the peasants into this useful organization yeah. and that's where I am right now that's exactly what I studied for my <laughs> entrance exam. So I applied for master's in East Asian studies cool. at Delhi University, and yeah. I got in. Really? Yeah, but I had to give it up because my dad wouldn't allow me to live and study in Delhi oh. because it's supposed to be a very uh, Delhi not boys. so safe city for girls, uh, and that's so something I cannot argue with coming from North India because it is like shots fired, I'm Delhi. Sorry, yeah. India, but you gotta work on your safety for women. You guys are fucked. So, so yeah, um, it's okay, and he was like, you know okay. what? If you wanna experience like living on your own, just go abroad. I was like, okay, that's far better for me then. You know, like I would love to. Yeah. But yeah, I studied all about that yeah. in my uh, yeah. station studies. You know, Rob Hanley. What the hell? What? The, work, the teacher I'm working for right now, he's an Asian, study, Asian studies specialist. And like China course I did with him, he's like, he's really, if you want to just talk shit, shit with him, he's a really smart, interesting guy and he specializes in corporate social responsibility in China or in Asia and how you can make Western values of corporate social responsibility spread out. But he's a really Asian specialist, so it's really interesting. Yeah. It would have been cool if I had gone into that master's. I would have been able, one of the uh, requirements to uh, be able to graduate that master's program was to learn to uh, speak either Chinese Mandarin, yeah. Korean, or Japanese. Because cool. th- those were the three countries that I was speaking. You should have picked Mandarin if you did. Of course, I would because it's like the most widely spoken language. Yeah. yeah. And it's on the path. I mean, like, Korea is doing really well, so is Japan, but I think if you don't learn Mandarin, it's like not learning English yeah. when you had the chance. It's the coming up. Mm. And yeah. President G. Yeah. But I'm curious, like, have you guys heard about all the development China's doing in Africa? Oh, yeah. yes. Like, totally. I'm curious how much of that, like, Chinese culture, language, and stuff like that is going to spread to Africa now. Mm. China is the... I, I mean, it's not I a cultural know. spreader, though. Well, I not, think yeah. they're just, like, uh, trying to, like, first establish their own, like... Soft power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. But still... They're, I don't think they're very interested to put their culture in there. They just want to, like... I think they're more economical. interested in being called the superpower. You know, that America's there's, kind of there's in there. There's I in think, there. and a lot of people have uh, sided with that. They, a lot of researchers and um, academics, they, they actually have already predicted China's going to be ruling. Oh, yeah. And there's, there might be a war. I, that's I, my paper. I did a paper on the... I didn't agree with the thought, but I used the paper idea, like... If China continues down the Xi Jinping path of not hiding one's ability, instead of Dao Jongping's hide one's ability and hide one's passion, that's not even the right quote, but it's in the idea of the right yeah. quote. But Xi's all like nationalism, all that. There's actually a lot of issue with America that China's being really aggressive now. Oh, yeah. and if you look through America's history or any hegemon, which is the main power's history, they kind of, there's usually a conflict will arise if you're coming up power starts acting aggressive rather than sneaking through. Yeah. So like if China stays aggressive at the pace, mm. we might see US intervention I, I I can't see the US intervening. Especially with them now and their whole nationalistic stance. Now they're Trump stepping lasts back. eight years, man. It's not it's not that long. But, but then you see a lot of uh, resemblance to the way China and America, like how America in the past and now present has been doing like you know, like you know, when it comes to like uh, meddling in foreign affairs, yeah. how they do it. China's kind of doing that. Like, oh, yeah. There is this like mm-hmm. set of islands in the South China Sea yeah. called the Daiyu Islands that America, uh, like Japan, the Riku, Ruko as well, or Raiku. Da- da- they they, they, they have their different names. Different I remember names. this. Yeah, yeah, I didn't remember, remember the one. Sorry. Like the Japan says it's part of their country, but yeah. China's like it's ours, and yeah. they're really aggressively pursuing yeah. that. They're oh, making yeah. sure yeah. that we take in as many. You know, like things that we yeah. can, and they're doing that. You see, you see that resemblance with yeah. the American yeah. tactics, and the same they're doing with the Silk Road. Oh, yeah. 
two. Yeah. Yeah. Up, yeah, the, through Pakistan, or, through Ukraine, yeah, through, yeah. Also through the ocean. Through the ocean and that's one, exactly, and yeah. The, and yeah. the same with Africa. So don't you see, like, you know, like, America does the same with, like, many, you know, Middle Eastern affairs? But democracy <laughs> and neoliberalism is the only <laughs> way to go. Yeah. Who needs authoritarianism? Yeah, even in India, like, the city that I was born in, yeah. in northeastern India, it's called Along. It's a very remote town. My dad was posted there because my dad is in the paramilitary. The paramilitary forces, sorry. Come down, are, come down. <laughs> they're, um, so they're always like posted in like the the conflict areas of the country, the border areas like Pakistan, Kashmir, and the north. So the city that I was born in, if you go in China and you look at their map, yeah, it's yeah, part yeah, of their country. yeah, oh yeah. But it's a disputed land. Yeah, yeah. And they still show it. They don't give two fucks about it. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like I'm sorry if hey, I have you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Six ethnicities of the Chinese Great Han race, <laughs> as they would say. And even when the uh, even with the like eastern part of China, uh, the Uyghur people. Yeah, oh yeah, those poor boys. Speak a different language, yeah. and even there, the Chinese. I, I mean, I, I don't the Muslims. Be, like, yeah. The Muslims. I don't want to like parse <laughs> A possibility of one in five Uyghurs or a million Uyghurs are in, are in a re-education facility right now. <laughs> like right now, enjoying re-education. Yeah, but, I don't but I feel like it doesn't have to be like just because you're different. Like like you said earlier that that was this one part of India that still wants to be independent. Yeah. Or I think like just because you have like a different way of speaking, or they still have the same history, so you're still part of that country. Mm-hmm. And just to try to cut yourself off and that just to be but special is just like yeah. for me. Like you're just like neglecting everything that was in the past just to be something because you think you can be better. Yeah. Different, yeah. the past, but you still can be different and still be from a big group or a big country. Yeah. The past so is being used as a catalyst to achieve what what they can in the present. Like for example, Kashmir, Pakistan, and India, they both claim, you know, like you know, yeah. part of like the, yeah. the area being part of their territory. And there was supposed to be a referendum where the Kashmiris would get to choose who they want to be with, mm. India or Pakistan. That referendum never happened. And that's the whole reason of the dispute, right? But I have lived in Kashmir most of my life because that's where my dad was really posted. And I've talked to the local people and they all don't care about India. They or don't Pakistan. care. They, they want, want their Azad life. Kashmir. They want to be Kashmir. That's what they want. They're like, yeah. we will be self sufficient. We want our own country. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all they care about. I think the danger would be, and then I'm not agreeing on this. But isn't Kashmir the location where most of the main two rivers in India come from? So that means there'd be water access and stopping of dams through Kashmir. Actually, there's only uh, there's supposed to be five main rivers in the north part of India, um, and four of them are in Punjab, Indian Punjab. But well, they start through the Himalayas through Kashmir, don't That's they? Just one river. That just goes one. Tibet, Kashmir, and just one. Huh? Uh, the other part of North India. It's named something else. Yeah. You know, the Indian government has really bent it. Bent That's what I mean. They don't know what it really 
because they just see, oh, we want to be us and whatever, yeah. and they don't think about what it means to call me, by quality, yeah. and they don't care about that. They forget about the fact how much Indian government is doing for them. Yeah. They're giving them, like, subsidized food rations and everything. Like, normal Indian people don't have, they have to pay more than the Kashmiri people have to pay. Mm-hmm. And you two can be on your own. You don't try being on your own. You're yeah. going to fail that. You're trying the military. The fact is, like, the blood you do. You elect the wrong person. Once they get into more power, they try to suppress the, the freedom of expression and to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if Iran, before the Islamic Revolution took place, the, the Shah, the king who ruled that, it was the kingdom of Iran. Yeah. Women, when they were ruling, when they were living under the, the kingdomship of the Shah of Iran, they had much more freedom than after he was taken out. Yeah. She broke the seal, girl. Yeah. No. Gosh, I paused the box. <laughs> no. Where's she going? Watching this way. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. I'm glad. Thank you for the invite. I'm glad I got to come out of the house. You have to. I can't forget that last. Uh, My birthday, I think. When was the last time you all went to Carlos? Remember? Carlos, maybe. Yeah, where you took that really like zoomed in picture. Yeah. Of <laughs> That's lovely. That's beautiful. Yeah. Can I take photos while I'm. That was such a fun. Oh, so re- is it recording? It is recording. This is the longest podcast. Really? It's we, definitely. We made a new record. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, perfect. It's artsy though. It's artsy. <laughs> Why is the flash on? Oh, whatever. That was a fun time though. I had a yeah, blast. I enjoyed it. I haven't had this in a long time. See, I feel like I'm in my bachelor's degree when I actually study political science. These are the kind of conversations I love having right. in my class with my professors and my you know, classmates. When I came here, it was like total cut off. And that's the reason, you know, I made so many friends in the beginning. Yeah. My first year. Thinking that, oh, you know, they're going to be the same people. They're going to share the same level of, like, uh, conversations that I like to Intellectual have. discussions. Intellectual discussions. Yeah. And when they did, did not, it's and hard. I was like, shit. Like, you know, it's hard like, to find. It was just like, and then I slowly kept, like, decreasing my friend circle. And I'm here, my, this is my third year here. And I realized I only have, like, a handful of people that I can actually have a good conversation with. That's good. All I know the what people, you mean. they just, like, I'm, and sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, how was I friends with, like, why was I? Why I know were I mean. hanging out with them in the first place? Like, that's something I could never, like, that's the kind of person I can't have a conversation with. It was just, yeah. you just, you just, just needed the emotional support. Like, it's, yeah, it's a hierarchy. Yeah. You need people. You go crazy yeah. if you're by yourself. Yeah. Like, I, when I lived in Montreal, I had no friends for two and a half months. That's what I became. I'm pretty sure my depression stems from my two months alone. And I didn't know anyone. And I was, like, going crazy. <laughs> was, was it like, a language barrier? Was no, I just. 
didn't know anywhere to do it. And, like, most things were money based. So, like, I had to buy to do anything and I just didn't. But, like, it's hard. I made friends drink. I went to a frost week. And, like, I partied my face off drinking. But I made a lot of friends. And like, I had 140 friends on my Facebook in, like, three days. <laughs> and, like, I enjoyed a lot of those people. And I still talk to some of those people today. But, like, you need friends. Whatever it is at the beginning. And you need good friends so you can vent out whatever you're going through, like whatever you release, you need. Yeah. Like without them really judging you on mm-hmm. it. That's actually mark of like actually being a good friend. They yeah. don't judge you. Like, and I've had bitter experiences in my past with friendships here. Like, if I would be myself, if I would show a little bit of myself, they would judge me hard. They, they'd like label me. Yeah. And I'd be like. That's a big issue in general too. And I and that would be a first sign for me to know that okay, this is not the person I should be hanging out with. So, you know, I don't regret those experiences I had because those yeah. were the experiences that made me like actually gave me uh, an insight into the kind of person I yeah. was, which I could have not, you know, know about I if I hadn't had those experiences. Just posted this because I'm also getting really into Buddhism. Every experience, Buddhism. no matter how bad and painful within it, a blessing of some kind. You know what? Exactly. My end goal is to become a Buddhist. Yeah. yeah. I want to live in the Himalayas mm-hmm. and I want to be a Buddhist. That's the life I envision for myself at the end. Like yeah. After like achieving all I have because Buddhism is basically about getting rid of all your wants. Because yeah. wants are the Even the, there's a hard part of that though and I listened to a recent one recently. <laughs> But you're trying to get rid of all your wants, but what you're really missing, you're not getting rid of the want to get rid of your wants. <laughs> and that was actually a Buddhaic issue that a guy had to deal with, because he met the Buddha, and the Buddha said, or he asked the Buddha, Why, how can I get through my life? I just have all these issues and all these issues. And the Buddha says, well, you just need to remove all your issues. So the man, while well, the Buddha was in town for the week, the man trained and removed all his issues. And he came to the Buddha a week later feeling so proud of his ability for being free of these issues. And then the Buddha laughed. He said, That's fantastic. They've done that. So have you gotten rid of the want to have the want that you wanted in the first place? The man realized he had not. And he started laughing with the Buddha because he realized his want to what the Buddha wanted was his own want of what he wanted. And that's a very... Ridiculous sentence, yeah. but it makes a weird amount of sense yeah. that your want to be free of everything is a want you have to get rid of too just to enjoy your experiences. Yeah. You know? Actually, the tree under which Buddha sat yeah, was uh, meditating for enlightenment. That tree is in India. Yeah. 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 The Buddha is India? He, yeah. He was Sorry. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You ought to know. <laughs> he was a prince. Yeah. He gave it all up. He gave Siddharth. it all up. Yeah. Siddharth, yeah. Every time you know Siddharth, <laughs> I always think Siddharth. That's how you always think of him. He's not Siddharth, though. He's a smart guy, but he's not Siddharth. Siddharth yeah. is supposed to be here. Mm. Here's, here's an interesting question. I've known a couple of people. So many people have actually found quite spiritual when they came here. But David, I'm becoming in a sense, Indian acculturalized by becoming more Buddhaic and culture uh, and chakra meditation as well as yoga. But I've met a lot of Indians who might come here a little more spiritual. And then they become, if anyone knows the word, but they become chads, which is like, yeah, bro, like, we're going to the gym, bro. And like, they used to be more spiritual. Oh, chad. Like, yeah, bro, I'm a chad, bro. Let's go to the gym. Let's have some beers. Let's fuck some bitches, bro. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, I'm, it's so weird. I'm like, that's, that culture gives it to them and I'm like, whoa, it's weird. It's interesting. Have you noticed that at all? I was, um, so, my, okay, my, when it comes to religion, I was, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be, have a discussion. What, are, what other hot button topics do we have? It's not going to be so like. Climate change deniers. <laughs> no, seriously, I was raised in a Catholic, all girls Catholic school. Oh, wow. And uh, so that really shaped her girl. <laughs> she wasn't the boy. She wasn't like boy in Catholic yeah. school at least. <laughs> Priest left her alone. <laughs> the teen years, like from kindergarten till grade 12. I was like all... Hold on. Like a little white dress and everything? Yeah, like nuns yeah. and everything. You know, like, <laughs> nuns and everything. Dang, yeah, dangerous. Everything. So like I got a lot of... Like I was shaped up with that kind of an upbringing. Like Catholic Christian upbringing. And 
there came a point in my life when I was in middle school where I started questioning because that's the time being when I actually got really interested in learning about theology as a subject, like yeah. knowing the origins of all the religions that mm-hmm. the Abrahamic religions basically are all the same, right? They have the same beginning, you know, yeah. the, the history. Yeah. And then also like what I was born into, I was born into a Sikh religion, which is very closely uh, related to Buddhism. If you well, it's a non-religion, but more of a yeah. practice. But then today, yeah. I actually challenge Sikhism. That is today because it has become a religion, which is not supposed What's to the be. Point? That's the point. Yeah. yeah. So I could actually be be thrown. Out. <laughs> I could be thrown out of the. I could. You want to give it up? <laughs> you could be let the yeast bubble up. Keep going. Sorry. I could be kicked out of my like, religious temple if I say if I become vocal about the things that I hate about. Oh, oh yeah, get in there. <laughs> Zamboni. <laughs> so yeah, I have a lot of things to challenge like my people about like when it comes to seeking. But anyhow, that's besides the point. So that was the age, you know, when I started questioning things and I got into the history of it and then I was like, oh, interesting. Well, yeah. This is not what they tell me. Like, yeah. And also, okay, I owe it to the kind of family I had. My parents have always been agnostic. You know, like they've yeah. not really been very religious. Like they believed oh, in a kind of a spirituality, but they didn't believe in a. So weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they didn't believe in a. It smell does. this glass. Smell in it. It. I think it smells like vomit. vomit. Not vomit, but it smells different. I don't know. I don't know. Like no. here, smell mine. Is it the beer or is it your glass? No, but the beer we all no, every every couple like drinks taste. I have, I smell like that <laughs> smell, and I'm like maybe that's just you. <laughs> I'm <don't know, laughs> feeling it. Mm. I'm remembering what happened last night. Oh, that's like, <laughs> mm. I just had a terrible <laughs> hangover. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, religion. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. And um, the basic topic. Yeah. Yeah. So my family was not like a believer into organized yeah. religion, but they were kind of spiritual, oh, okay. but like didn't believe in organized. So I had the freedom to choose to like, you know, like be who I wanted. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then for a long time I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God. Like I was like, no, fuck that shit. Like I, like I, I was like the black sheep in my like extended family because everybody is like so religious. Like oh, you're not going to the the our temple is called the Gurdwara. Like you're yeah. not going there, not coming in. And I'm like, what's the point of that? Like that's exactly why we created Sikhism is to not worship anything. I mean, you're exactly doing that. You know. Mm-hmm. Then my family was okay with that, but later on I kind of turned myself into being an atheist because I was so much into theology. I was like, yeah, I do believe in some sort of power out yeah. there, like spiritual. I mean, I'm a spiritual person, but that does not mean I'm religious. I'm yeah. I've even so, moved to I was, faith. Yeah, like I and I I was like that in India. Yeah. Coming here, I've been like I haven't changed that status or anything. Yeah, maybe so for an Indian that must be different because not a lot of Indians are like that. They're really shaped up by the religion that they're born. Yeah. I think that's interesting. I'm glad you ended that by trying to answer my question because I, I don't know how you got on talking about it. I was really yes. enjoying listening to your story of how you shaped yourself. That was really cool in yeah. itself. I forgot that started by talking about Chad's, Indian Chad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like really we're bringing about. I into the fact that because I travel so but much. But maybe that's like the rebel situation that they have. No, to. like, but really. Yeah. Like, it yeah, just yeah, goes yeah. for every other country too. Like, the fact that I was so um, exposed in my country because of my dad. So there was a time period when my dad was posted in South India where Tarika comes from. Yeah. And she agrees to this too. In South India, I experienced that people, the culture that they so deem correct there. Like the simple fact of women wearing flowers on their head. So in South India, it's a ritual for women to wear flowers on their head. They do that. It's supposed to be a good thing. But if you do that same thing in North India, you'll be considered a prostitute. Mm. Do you look at it the same thing? Yeah. The same culture <coughs> act that's, cur- that's it, taken as like yeah. normal in one culture is taken as totally different in another. It's how you start a civil war. Like the states, the slavery was allowed in one half, it wasn't allowed in the other. Yeah. And that's not the only reason why the civil war happened, but that is, <laughs> yeah. that's, that cultural difference is so yeah, much. Is there could right? be a split between India yeah. eventually. So what is considered right in one place is considered wrong in another place. Mm-hmm. So what is considered right in that place might be considered wrong in another yeah. place. But, but I that's feel just like, how it goes. But I feel like that is culture. 
So for yeah. me, if, for example, the slave thing like left out because that was like pressuring something on somebody that didn't have a choice. Yeah. But like with the plot, I don't know like the whole context of it, but I feel like that's what makes cultures is that for one place it's normal, it's something good, and in another place it's not. I think it starts to be critical when one side tries to push their like yeah. ideals of it onto the other and doesn't accept, okay, we see it as something nice, they see it as something bad, we just leave it at that. If the ones that think that it's something bad try to mm. push it, no, that's I what know. I'm saying. That place is not like the topic that I was thinking about. But if you know, like uh, having a I don't, know, I don't know housekeeper who likes to work as a housekeeper, whatever is okay in that. Why should you like call it a slave in another place yeah. if they want to do it? If they get paid, you know, if everything is right with that. So yeah. I feel that's just culture. If you would press one ideal on everyone. Whoa, you would be so boring. That's like, this I world would be just like you one thing. That's where I always use it. I like to use the saying that if it's not your cup of, cup of tea, you don't drink it. Mm. <laughs> you can tell the other person to not drink it just because you don't like it. Yeah. Right? Do you want some tea, Terika? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, stop this because I want to order food. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hear the 13 <laughs> items she's going to add. We're going to do a pause here. We'll come back in a bit, everybody. <laughs> We're not just going to end the podcast like that, so we're awkwardly ending with whatever we said before I paused 15 minutes ago. Thank you everyone for listening to this ridiculous <laughs> podcast tonight, and I look forward to episode actual four. This is going to be episode question mark, question mark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well.